Froggy Lost Her Tail Once upon a time, there was a froggy. She loved nothing more than splashing around the muddy little watering hole that she called home. She'd wiggle and jump and splash and ribbit happily all the while. One day, while she was soaking up to her eyes and catching tasty flies, she heard some animals approaching. Excited, she hopped out of the water to meet her guests. Ribbit! Hello there, friends, she said. Approaching her was a beautiful cheetah and her wild dog friend. They were panting thirsty and made right for her watering hole. Yes, come on in, have a drink, she said and backstroked across the muddy waters. Hey, look at that ugly little lump, said the cheetah. Someone put a talking wart in the watering hole. The dog barked out laughter. She looks like a yam someone left out in the sun. Get out of the watering hole, little yam. The froggy looked at herself, hurt. But I, I live in this watering hole. Ribbit, she croaked. And, wait, I'm ugly? This time, the cheetah laughed. You really have to ask? Look at you. You don't have pretty eyes like us. You don't have beautiful coats like us. And worst of all, you don't even have a tail. She swished her own big bottle brush tail to drive home the point. Yeah, little yam girl, said the dog, shaking his own fuzzy rump. His tail was a silky patchwork of whites and golds. Can't be good looking without a tail. That's just the rules. Ribbit, that's not fair, said the froggy, who had always thought herself pretty cute all in all. You don't have to be fair when you're beautiful, purred the cheetah. She turned to the wild dog. Let's go find somewhere else to drink. I'd hate to catch ugly from this water yam. Laughing, they sauntered away from the water hole, leaving Froggy all alone. Alone and sad. I'm ugly, she said, looking at her own reflection in the cloudy water. It hadn't occurred to her before. She had nice webbing, a pretty modeling of green and browns, a lovely extra wide mouth, and even the perfect amount of slime. Well, she thought to herself, maybe all of that doesn't stack up to silky fur and a long, beautiful tail. Maybe they were right. I don't want to be ugly. She slapped the water with a floppy, webbed hand. The ripples just made her look even uglier, and she moaned in misery. What could she do? She thought then of the sky god. It was said he would grant a favor to an animal, if they were willing to pay the price. Froggy didn't know what the price may be, and she didn't care. She desperately wanted to be beautiful. Her little froggy heart couldn't handle being called an ugly yam. Not ever again. Softly, she began to sing a prayer to the sky god. Today I learned if you don't have a tail You're basically a nobody and nobody cares Today I learned since I don't have a tail No one wants to swim with me or even breathe my air Oh my sky god, can you help me please? I don't want to be the ugly one that everyone can tease. Oh, my sky god, I'm not sure what you need. But I'll do anything you want, oh, any job or deed. Because today I ask you to gift me with a tail. You're kind and nice and generous and mighty without fail. Oh, my sky god, I hope you'll hear my plea And cure me of my misery and bring a tale to me Oh, my sky god, please bring a tale
With a crack of thunder and a flash of lightning, the sky god appeared. You wish for a tail? He said solemnly. This I can do, but you must do me a service in return. The sky god was here. Her song had worked. Yes, she cried. I'll do anything. Good, good, said the sky god. Tell me, what are your skills? Um... I'm good at hopping and splashing. Mostly I just sit in my watering hole. The sky god clapped his hands, his smile wide. Perfect! I have a magic watering hole that needs a guardian. A guardian? I'm not much of a fighter. The sky god laughed. No, no, nothing like that. It has a magic. It never goes dry. Your job will be to keep the animals taking turns. They'll know you work for me, so they'll listen. Can you do that? Froggy could barely believe her luck. A tail and a magic watering hole? Yes! Rivet, thank you, yes! All right, then, the sky god said. He clapped his hands and the world seemed to shake with thunder. Close your eyes now. Froggy squeezed them shut tight, and there was another great crash of thunder and a flash of lightning so bright she could see it through her eyelids. Take care of my watering hole, little Froggy, she heard the sky god say from the darkness, and enjoy your new tale. Froggy shook her head. It felt like she was waking up from a long nap. She stretched her back, flexed her legs, and wagged her tail. Her tail. I have a tail, she said, watching it wag back and forth. It was long and green and just, just beautiful, she said. It's beautiful. It was only then she noticed she was on the edge of a new watering hole. It was deep and clear and seemed just perfect for swimming. It was the sky god's watering hole. There was no doubt about it. Froggy settled quickly into her new life. She wiggled and jumped and splashed and wagged her tail for all the animals that came by to drink. Of course, the sky god had made her a tail worthy of a painting, and all the animals complimented her on it. This made Froggy happy beyond belief, and she seemed to make friends with every animal that came by the magic watering hole. At least, at first. As time went on, Froggy started to grow a little arrogant. She had the honor of guarding the Sky God's magic watering hole, and that would make anyone proud. But more than that, with her tail, Froggy felt beautiful. Simply completely, undeniably beautiful, and she knew it. And once she knew it, well, it went right to her head. She started being rude to the other animals, especially ones she thought were ugly, especially the ones who didn't have tails. I don't get it at all, she'd say to her new friends, the cheetah and the wild dog. All these ugly creatures, why don't they try and be beautiful like I did? You just have to work for it. The cheetah and dog purred and barked in agreement. Sure, they had been mean to her before, but now she had a tail like them and a magic watering hole, and that's what really mattered. Froggy found they were better company than ugly animals. Ugly animals, the poor, tailless things, just reminded her of how ugly she had been without even knowing it. It made her stomach feel queasy to think about. It was much easier to spend time with the beautiful animals, the ones like her. This went on until one day, during a terrible drought, the magic watering hole was the only water to be found for miles and miles around. The animals all lined up to use it, which made Froggy feel especially important, which, unfortunately, also made her especially rude. All right, move it along, ribbit, she said. Hey, zebra, you call that little brush a tail? 
Move it along, ugly. You can't even keep your colors straight. Okay, gazelles, you've had your fill. Now bound on out of here with that weak little behind. Of course, Froggy was happy to let her beautiful friends Cheetah and the wild dog in to drink, and the phoenix and lion with their long and lovely tails as well. But when the dung beetle scuttled up, she laughed out loud. Ha! Sorry, Froggy said. Water hole is all dried up. Um, but I can see Cheetah and Lion and them all drinking right now. Yeah, well, we all have these beautiful tails, Froggy said. And you, you eat dung, and you look like it. Cheetah laughed, and so did the dog. Can I please just have one drink? Sorry, beautiful creatures only, Froggy said. Come back when you have a tail. This is the Sky God's magic watering hole, said the beetle. It's for everyone. This isn't fair. Froggy turned up her nose and ribbited. You don't have to be fair when you're beautiful. There was a sudden crack of thunder and a flash of lightning. The sky opened and rain began to fall. The other watering holes started to fill and everyone she was rude to left to go drink somewhere else. There was another crack of thunder, so close it split the air, and Cheetah and Dog and the rest yelped and ran away, leaving Froggy all alone. Wait! Come back! Uh, I'm still here, said the dung beetle, sitting calmly in the rain. Ugh, who cares about you? You don't even have a tail! Neither did you until I took pity, the beetle said. And this is how you repay me? Repay you? What are you talking about? There was a blinding arch of lightning, and when Froggy opened her eyes again, the beetle was gone. In his place was the sky god, crackling in his anger. I give you a tale to ease your misery, and you just put that misery on others. You should have been kinder to the tailless and those you deem ugly, because you know how it feels to be looked down upon. Instead, you became just like the ones that made you miserable to begin with. Um, I'm sorry. Sorry isn't good enough. You need to learn your lesson. The wind howled, and the rain pounded, and the world started to shake and stutter, and thunder pounded, and lightning crashed, and everything went black as an angry sky. When Froggy woke up, she was back in her own little watering hole and her tail was gone. She began to cry bitterly until the sky god spoke from nowhere and everywhere. Don't cry, little froggy, he said, his voice the wind over savanna sand. You thought you were beautiful until the other animals told you different. You were right in the first place. But you can't be beautiful without a tail. Who says? The sky god smiled. It was like a sunny bask on a warm log. You were beautiful to start, and you are beautiful again. Look at yourself now, Froggy. Froggy looked at her familiar reflection in the pool of water before her. All she could see was her lack of tail. Look at those beautiful colors, the sky god said. Such a pretty mottling of green and browns. There's also a lovely extra-wide mouth for extra-wide smiles, very nice webbing for very strong swimming, and even the perfect amount of slime. Froggy stared at herself in the pool, noticing everything the sky god pointed out. She remembered a time when she used to admire those very same things. Suddenly, they didn't look so bad anymore. A frog isn't a cheetah. And it isn't supposed to be. You may not have a tail, but they don't have a long fly-catching tongue. It doesn't mean one is pretty and one is ugly. It just means you're different, Froggy. Different, he said, and his voice was a fading crack of thunder. Different and beautiful. Today I remembered that I don't need a tail To be pretty or beautiful or even nice or fair 
Today I remembered I am perfect as I am I always was and I'll always be I don't have to feel less than Oh my sky god, thank you for this gift I know I let you down when you granted my tail wish But oh my sky god, now I'm where I need to be All because you brought a tail to me Oh my sky god, you brought a tail to me was much happier after that. Even if the other animals called her a mean name, she would just ignore them. She knew she was beautiful, and that's what mattered. And it turned out lots of other animals thought Froggy was beautiful too, just as she always had been, tailless and warded. She was perfect just as she was. And to this day, it's said in Africa that frogs grow beautiful tails as tadpoles only to lose them as they get older just to remind us all of Froggy's lesson, that everyone is beautiful, each in their own unique and special way, and you should really be nice and fair to everyone, with or without a tail. The End Thanks for listening! 